All right, we're back. We're on page two, notes 21. We're talking about volume using calculus stuff. What we did on the previous page was we talked about volume either by plane slicing or with known cross sections, like two ways of talking about the same thing. Um, you can see I changed my shirt. I'm, it's really, really hot in here for some reason today. Uh, all right, let's see, let's see what we got. So in general, this is the result that we want to know. If you are told what the cross sections look like and you are asked for volume, all you end up doing is integrating the area of a cross section from where you start to where you stop. The key is to write the area of a cross section in terms of, excuse me, if you're doing dx, then in terms of x, if you're doing dy, in terms of y. That's really like the, the hard part, I guess. Um, these are, I, I think those are very straightforward. Um, squares are the most common, but let's take a look at the other ones. So. Uh, these are just some area formulas that you should really know. So I'm going to say that each of these, we're going to define an S. An S is going to be a segment, but I'm going to always accidentally call it a side. So S is going to be a segment. And if you're working, uh, it's going to be, I mean, basically it's top, takeaway, bottom. Um, so if you have a region, you know, where this is like g of x and f of x, then what I mean by s is you make a little segment perpendicular to whichever axis you're supposed to be using. And so if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, it's going to be top takeaway bottom. If it's perpendicular to the y-axis, it's going to be right takeaway left. Same as when we were finding area stuff, right? Uh, you want to keep using the same idea. So s is for segment. So in this case, it would be f of x minus g of x. Area of a square in terms of S is just going to be S squared. Now, rectangles are maybe actually the weirdest one. You have to be told something. So you're going to be told that it's like, um, you know, the, the height is three times the base and the base is in the XY plane. So the base is S and then the height is three times S. So you have to be told something. So you'll be told relation between base and height. But in general, this is going to end up like k times s squared, which is really, so it really, let me just, let me explain that a little more. It's really going to be s times, you know, k times s. So you get k times s squared. So it's really like you just have a square that you've kind of like, uh, you know, modified somehow. You've scaled it, uh, but you have to be told, like maybe the height is one fifth the base. Maybe the height is five times the base, like whatever. You have to know what K is, but it'll be given. So you don't have to worry about that. Equilateral triangles in general are S squared root three over four. Definitely memorize that one. Semicircles are the one that you should, no matter what, memorize. So here's what it is. It's gonna be pi over eight times S squared. Let me explain why it's pi over eight. So here's, here's your region. Here's S, right? So now S is the diameter. So S over two is the radius. Also, you gotta memorize, just memorize it. You should not have to run through this. You should just look at it and be like, semicircle is awesome, pi over eight S squared. And you just kind of like go for it. Area of a full circle is going to be pi r squared, so s over 2 squared, which is pi s squared over 4. But then we want semicircle. So that's half of a circle, so it's pi over 8 s squared. But you know what you're going to do? You're going to memorize that. You're not thinking about this. You're just doing. So these are the big four. Uh, there can be other things where the relationship is like explained to you. So isosceles right triangles, uh, there's two varieties of those. So isosceles right triangle where uh, the segment is in the plane, the leg is in the plane. It's just one half base times height. And then there's an isosceles right triangle where the hypotenuse is in the plane. I think we're going to look at that later. That's like uh, the weirdest one, I guess. It's not any worse. I mean, and if you notice, they all come back to s squared 
it's like they're all just some weird scaled up or down. Well, actually, they're pretty much all scaled down except the rectangle version of uh, a square. So let's see if we can do this. So uh, the nice thing about these problems is they're typically just set up and then use a calculator or just set up. Uh, so let's see if we can do it. So volume of solid whose base is the circle x squared plus y squared equals one unit circle and whose cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are given. All right. So let's draw something. So I mean, it's a circle. Magic circle. All right. Eh. So the issue, well, it's not really an issue, but uh, I'm going to say this is the top is radical one minus x squared and that the bottom is negative radical one minus x squared. All right. So then that makes S top takeaway bottom. Uh oh. I did something so I can't scroll. Hold on, I'm frozen. Will I still be frozen? I'm still frozen. All right, I gotta quit. Disappointing, really disappointing. Do, 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 do. Hopefully we didn't lose anything. We didn't really lose any. Okay, so S right here. So S is gonna be a top takeaway bottom. So it's radical one minus X squared minus negative radical one minus X squared, which is two root one minus X squared. All right, and then where are we going? We're going from negative one to one. I think we're basically done with this whole problem. So for squares, the volume is gonna be the integral from negative one to one of S, which is two root, one minus x squared squared dx. And then we'll use a calculator, but we're basically done. Also, you definitely don't need a calculator for that, but it's fine. Semicircles, volume, pi over eight, the integral of s squared, two root one minus x squared squared. Equilateral triangles, radical three over four, the integral from negative one to one, Two root one minus x squared squared. These are your dream. You want these problems to show up. Uh, I'm moving this a little bit. Okay, so that's it. If you can draw the region, if you can figure out what s is, and then you memorized your formulas, you're you're golden on these. All right, I'm gonna use a calculator. I will get the values again. You don't you don't really need a calculator on this because when you square that thing, it ends up pretty nice. Um, but anyway. Let's do uh, the integral. So the one thing, you get like really small volumes, I find in most of these problems, um, which like I always think is a little weird because I think a volume is big. I don't know. Um, so this is the, so the square is 16 thirds. So when we make our cross sections and their cross sections are squares, we get 16 thirds, which means for the next one, we're going to get 16 thirds times pi over eight. And then we're going to get uh, 16 thirds times root three over four. So you can do these, you know, you don't actually need a calculator at this point, but uh, so this will be two pi over three, which is just pi over eight times 16 thirds. Um, and then we'll get square root of three over four for equilateral triangles. So like people find this process intimidating. This, there's nothing intimidating about this process. This is, um, these are as good as it gets really. Uh, so this was root three over four times 16 thirds. So once we got the volume using square cross sections, we could pretty much find any of them just like straightforward. Uh, you know, what, what's the scale factor? So, a uh, semicircular cross section, pi over eight, uh, equilateral triangle is root three over four. That's it. All right. So we're done with this page. Uh, I think the key is drawing the picture, figuring out S. If you can figure out S, you are good to go. If you can't figure out S, uh, draw a better picture and work on that because that's the key. All right. So I'm going to stop this here. Be back in the next video. Do some more. See you there.